Listen, criticism is one thing, but a torrent of abuse is another. How bad has it been? I think it's hard for the scientists, like um, the basic scientists who discovered Omicron, and um, they were particularly targeted in this in this area and anyone who defended them then also got targeted so i think it's just it's, a, it's just a sad state of affair that um uh, when when things um are discovered or or when things are are noted um is that people get um targeted for for telling the truth and i think that's a great pity for science because it may mean that people will be more and more reluctant to disclose the, the data that they are seeing what sort of things have been said to them? Well, I think that the, well, the, the, the emails correspondence that, that, that we received was um, that, that we were under surveillance. They, know when they knew where we lived and they knew, they knew about our families and um, that, that what, what should happen is that we should be treated like the scientists were treated in China at the beginning of the pandemic. Gosh, that is really, really frightening. And without justifying those attacks at all, uh, there is a view amongst lay people that even though China was lambasted for muzzling its scientists after that uh, initial Wuhan outbreak, uh, there is a sense that this is exactly the kind of thing they were trying to prevent. Yes, I think um, everybody at a global level has tried to be incredibly transparent. Um, as soon as the, the sequence of SARS-CoV-2 was discovered, it was released globally to help make a vaccine. And if people hadn't been so open and transparent, we wouldn't have a vaccine or any of these antiviral or um, monoclonal antibodies at this moment in time. We require a collaboration with, with, with people all over the world and sharing of data that's critical to move the, the discovery process forward. So how do you explain then the Department of Health no longer sharing critical data with you as the South African Medical Research Council? Well, so we, we've got into a data sharing agreement and we, um, we went into talks this week and we now have access to the data and um, we now have clearly identified you know, what that data will be used for. Because of Papier, um, one has to be very careful how you use that data. Uh, because when people um, decide to be vaccinated, um, one can't release their personal data in any way. And so we had to tighten up um, all the, um, the the processes to make sure that we, we, we protect uh, you know, pr- privacy and, and yeah. private information. All right. So that wasn't to, to do with any resistance or any uh, chorus of voices uh, attacking scientists for being uh, forthcoming with the information you've been getting? No, not at all. It's just about making sure that, that no one can be sued um, if data is shared and that, right. um, that the department could be very vulnerable if data is shared and, um, and the privacy is violated. But, Prof, you, you've got to be worried about the anti-vax voices that are getting louder, not just on social media, but really turning into a lobby. And we can't ignore them, can we? I think they're very scary, and um, and they they're fueled by like a religious right wing people in in America. There's a group called the Dirty Dozen, who who propagates all this misinformation and anti-vax sentiment at a global level. And so these are white racists, and they find themselves in South Africa getting getting um, you know sympathy and and a, and a voice. The president, in the meantime, has kicked the mandate decision down the road. Uh, There are many whom we've spoken to, including Professor Mahdi, who say, actually, this is an urgent decision and it shouldn't be postponed. Vaccine mandates are critical for us to gain control of our pandemic in South Africa. You know, at a global level, you know, we have cases where we have over 90 percent vaccine coverage and in other parts of the world, over 80 percent. And so we, we can't be in a situation that only 38 to 40 percent of our population is vaccinated. We have to address what is the hesitancy, what is the reluctance. But at some stage, one has to become more forceful with, with trying to make sure people get vaccinated so that we can open up our economy, we don't get closed down, and we can open up our tourism industry. People want to come to a tourist in the, um, destination and know that the, the people that serve them at restaurants, the hotel staff are vaccinated. When I went to uh, Namibia and on holiday, all the staff at the hotel had been vaccinated. And that was one of the criteria that they used to attract people to come to, to do tour, tourism yeah. in, in Namibia. It's a decision that requires leadership, isn't it, ultimately? Professor Glenda Gray, I appreciate your time. That's the CEO and president of the South African Medical Research Council. Current events. 
Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.